We're going to review quadrilaterals um, tomorrow. So I want to make a video on reviewing quadrilaterals. All right. Um, just for hindsight, sake, let's pull this up. So use properties of parallelograms to find the following measures. So when we look at these problems, these are going to be parallelograms. So the beauty of parallelograms is there's a lot of good information. The opposite sides are equal to each other. So whatever this length is, that length is. Whatever this length is, is going to be the top and bottom. We know that these are parallel lines, which means they run side by side and they never intersect. Um, we can also talk about the ones on the top and bottom run side by side and never intersect as well. So there's a lot of great information when we know parallelograms. But for this problem, they want you to know opposite angles are congruent. Also, because we have parallel lines, we can draw U-shapes. And when we draw U-shapes with parallel lines, so these are our parallel lines cut by a transversal, it forms a U-shape. And anytime we have a U-shape, we have 180 degrees every single time. So if we know that this is 99 right here, 99 plus something equals 180. So we can subtract 99 from both sides. And that something is going to be our missing angle. So, all right, do this 17, and that will be 80, and that will be 1. So, this will be 81. And then, opposite angles are congruent in parallelograms, actually, in a lot of quadrilaterals, but we're starting with parallelograms. So, we have Angle U is 81, and angle S is 81, and angle T is 99, okay? All right, now, WY, we know this whole thing is 48, but because we know it's a parallelogram, we don't know, hold on. Number six, oh, we're still using properties of parallelograms. So, in number six, if I know this, then I know diagonals bisect each other. And I know diagonals bisect each other. Okay. Um, so if the whole thing is 48, that means 24 and 24. Okay. Yuck, that's ugly. All right. And then we know WM here to here is 7x minus 4. So 7x minus 4 is going to be equal to 24 because we split the 48 in half and that's what we're going to get. So underline your variable, draw a line down the middle of the equal sign, and then we can just solve this. So we're going to add 4, do addition property of equality. So add prop of equality. All right, that's going to give us 28. This is going to give us 7x. We zero out the fours. Then next steps, divide by 7, divide by 7, and that's division property of equality. x is going to equal 4 by wanting out the 7s. So x equals 4. Um, in this problem, it just told us to solve for x. We could plug it back in and find that length measure, but we should already know that length measure being 24. So hopefully it just comes out when we plug it back in, we get 28 minus 4, which is 24. So we know we did it correctly. All right. Opposite sides are equal to each other. So I'm going to take the negative 18 plus 7x and set it equal to the opposite side, 3x plus 14. Now, if I do that one way, I should be able to do it the other way as well. So this 13y is going to be equal to 9 plus 10y. And we can set both of these up. Now, for the first one with the x's, we have x's on both sides of the equal sign. So that means I want to move all of them over to one side or the other. And I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. 
So that's going to leave me with 14 on this side and then negative 18 plus 4x. Next steps, we're going to add 18 to both sides. And that's going to leave us with 32 equals 4x. And then division property of equality so that x equals 8 will be our final solution. We can plug it back in and find that length. 3 times 8 is 24, 34, 38. So this length should be 38. All right, other one. Let's subtract 10y from both sides. And that's going to give me 3y equals 9. Then once again, who are you teaching on math on a Saturday? Go play some video games and enjoy yourself. <laughs> I'm just trying to get ready for the week. And I'm giving this review to my students tomorrow. And we're going to do half the problems in the class. And then the other half that we're not going to do are going to be in this video. So that they can watch them and get all of the answers correct that they need. All right. So we're going to divide both sides by three. Um... And then y is going to equal 3. We can plug it back in. 13. So, oh, all oh good. I knew what you meant. And we're going to get 39. So this side over here is going to be 39. All right. Same thing. So we have, once again, parallelogram. Set these opposite sides equal to each other. So I have 7y plus 46 equals 3y plus 62. Notice how the y's are sticking together. And then the other side, 6x plus 3 equals 7x minus 6. The x's are sticking together here and here. Okay, so solve these out. Um, do the best you can. Don't get too bogged down. Hopefully practice makes perfect, but we underline our variables and then draw our line down the middle of the equal sign. Okay, and we're gonna move all the highlights to one side or the other. So we could minus seven Y on both sides. We could minus three Y on both sides. I choose to subtract three Y on both sides because I want seven minus three to give me a positive number where if I subtract seven on both sides, then I'm dealing with negatives. And for some reason, negatives just trip, make more, make more accidents than anything a lot of the time so all right so we subtracted 3y from both sides let me get a good um, purple in here and we're going to subtract 46 from both sides now and then we're going to be left with 4y equals we're going to borrow from there that's going to be a 6 16 divide by 4 and y is going to equal 4 highlight and highlight, then draw a line down the middle of the equal sign. And that shows once again that we have uh, highlights on opposite sides. So we wanna move all of the X's to one side or the other. And once again, you could subtract seven X from both sides, but then you're dealing with negatives where this way I've got an X minus six or a one X, but that's just an X singular. Add 6 to both sides, and x is going to equal 9. And like, and we could draw, divide by 1, divide by 1, but that's not going to change our answer. That's why I, I make it disappear, because it's, it's just a placeholder. It's telling you I have one pen in my hand, but it's just a pen, just talking singular. All right. Next one. We know we have rectangles in these problems. You don't, but my worksheet does. I have rectangles, it says it right here. Okay, and then it also says a hint, use the Pythagorean theorem. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And the only thing we care about in the Pythagorean theorem, the only thing that's important to us is the c value. If the c value is in the wrong spot, the problem is completely wrong. But as long as we put the C value in the correct spot, we can actually figure this out. So wherever your 90 degree angle is in your right triangle, and I'm looking at this right triangle, I could look at the top one too. 
because we know in rectangles, opposite sides are equal. That's going to come into play later. But our question mark is our C value. So we are going to keep C as C. And then you can label one of them A, the other one B. It really won't matter as long as you do your math correctly. But we do this. So then I need 27 squared. I have no idea what that is. 27 times 27 equals 729. So this is 729, and then 36 times 36, no idea, it's very large, 1296. And my guess is it's gonna add together to give us something beautiful. So 1296 plus 729 equals 2025. 2025 equals C squared. Um, I don't know, maybe 45? But we're going to take the square root of 2025 and get 45. Hey, good guess. So when we do this, we're going to square root both sides. And our brain came up with that, so there's a plus or a minus there. However, negative lengths for triangles doesn't work. So we only need the plus the square root of 2025. The squared and square root sign are going to cancel out, so I'm just left with a C. And then when we do this, we're going to get 45 as our C value. So our diagonal for C is going to be 45. Now, in the next one, we know the right angle is here. I'm looking at the bottom triangle. So we have the C value for this problem. So I know C equals 4. Now I'm going to look for either A or B. Doesn't matter, as long as you do it correctly. So I'm gonna put four in for C. I'm gonna put A for A plus three squared. So I have 16 equals nine plus A squared because three times three is nine, four times four is 16. That's where I'm getting those numbers from. I'm gonna subtract nine from both sides and A squared is going to equal seven take the square root of both sides and a is going to equal the square oops fix a is going to equal the square root of seven and the square root of seven is a number um if the square root of nine is three and the square root of four is two in between that is the square root of seven so it's going to be two point something probably closer to three point two point eight two point seven around there and we can show that by Putting seven, two point six four. Okay, so maybe I was a little off, but that's how we do it. We know the square root of four is two. We know oops, the square root of nine is three. So in between two and three, the square root of four and the square root of nine, the square root of seven sits there. So that's how I approximated it with not knowing what the square root of seven was. I just know that this is two, this is three, in between that is here. So it's gotta be in between two and three. All right, this one. We have a rhombus for these problems. Don't believe me? Ask the dishes, no, wrong movie. Uh, directions, property of rhombus, rhombi. Rhombuses, Rom rom rhombis. I don't know how they actually say it, but we're going to make all the sides in a rhombus the same because that's what's special about a rhombus. We also know that opposite angles because um, it falls under that opposite angles are equal to each other. So this is 93, that's 93. Now that does not make this and that 93, but it does make 2x plus 93 plus 93 equal to 360 because all four angles in a quadrilateral is going to equal 360. So what is this? 186 equals 360 and 2x. So subtract 186 from both sides. And I'm going to get 2x equals borrow, borrow, it's a 15. So four 
seven, one, 174. Divide by two, divide by two. X equals 16, so that's 887. I have no idea, just mental mathing it. 174 divided by 2, 87. All right, so that means angle D and angle B are 87s. That means angle E is 93. BC is 9. DC is 9. DE is 9. And then when we add, we get 36 because four, four nines. 4 times 9, 4 nines, 9 plus 9 plus 9 plus 9 is 36. And the perimeter is always the outside fencing around your object. All right. So this time, I want to get a little bit interesting. What we're going to know, once again, all the sides are 5, so this is going to be 20 for the perimeter. Now we're dealing with the angles. And what we need to know is diagonals, not that they... Um, well, uh, they make 90 degree angles. They're perpendicular bisectors. So when we do this, we know that these are gonna form 90 degree angles. And if this is 26, and what I'm looking at is I'm just focusing on this triangle right here. So if I know, and let's blow that triangle up a little bit. If I know this angle is 26, and I know this box in the corner stands for 90 degrees, then I can solve for that because x plus 26 plus 90 equals 180. Subtract 90, subtract 90. And usually in these situations too, you could always just set x plus 29 equal to 90 because once we subtract 90, we're cutting it in half. Minus 26 and x is gonna equal, um, this will be 64. So we know this is 64 up here. So when we look at W, Y, X, oh, okay. <clears throat> um, we also know that these angles get bisected as well. So if this is 26, this is 26. So y, x, z, so this angle is gonna be 26. Angle x, the whole thing, is gonna be 52. Angle y, the whole thing, not that I agree that's, that's how they should write it, but it's how it is. 64 and 64, uh, 128. Angle Z is going to go back to 26 and 26 again, so that's 52. Angle W is going to go back to angle Y. And then W, Y, X. Okay, so we just showed that that's 64 as well. Okay. I know these are a little bit tricky, but just blow them up into right triangles and know that the diagonals bisect the angles here as well. Okay, trapezoids, and these are isosceles trapezoids. So when we do this, we know this angle is congruent to that angle, and we know this angle is congruent to that angle. So, oh, thank you so much for the likes. Um, so if this is 142, this is gonna be 142, and then we don't know this, and we don't know that, but we do know that x plus 142 because these lines are parallel, cut by a transversal, we know that's 180. So it equals 180. And we could have done all four, add them together, set it equal to 360, we can do that as well. There's many different methods to solve these types of problems. I'm gonna go 38, x equals 38. So each of these are going to be 38. So angle L, angle M, 38s, and then 142. And this only works with isosceles trapezoid. If it's something else, I don't know that that angle is equal to that angle. They don't even look equal. 
So you have to be careful with that. Make sure it's an isosceles trapezoid before you just start setting angles equal to each other. But these two dashes on the sides of the legs of the trapezoid definitely tell you that it's an isosceles trapezoid. So once again, we have a U-shape. U-shape's 180. So I'm going to do 180 equals 127 plus 7x minus 10. And we can do this in multi-steps. We're going to subtract 127 minus 127. And then we can add 10 to both sides. Or we could have done 127 minus 10 and then subtracted what was ever left over. Uh, it really is personal preference. Just make sure you do it correctly. So 6, so that's going to be 5, take a 3, and then, then 7x plus, whoops, minus 10. I want to plus 10 to both sides. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add 10 to both sides to get rid of that 10. 7x equals 63. Ooh, nice number for 7 to divide into. x equals 9. So we get 9 for x. <laughs> And it didn't ask for the other angle. However, the other angle we already know because we would do 180 minus 127. Or we can plug 9 in. Either way, we'll get our answer. Okay, so with trapezoids, with isosceles trapezoids, we don't know that this is equal to that. But we do know that this length from M to O... is equal to j to o. So these are equal to each other. And we do know that o to l is equal to o to k because isosceles trapezoids. So if they tell us some things and they tell us like k o is 42, I know this is 42. And if the whole thing is 77 and we subtract 42 from it, we're going to get 35. So that is going to tell us that this is 35 because 35 plus 42 has got to equal 77 because that's what that says. And if you add them together, does it? Yes. So we know we did it correctly. So now if we're looking for O to M, it's 35. L to O, 42. K to M, add those together, but it should be the same as the other diagonal. And then J to O, 35. So segment addition postulate, a piece plus a piece equals the whole thing. And you just have to use your properties of isosceles trapezoids. Now, if they give you some other stuff that you need to take care of, use it. So KO is 8. So LO is 8. OM is 4. OJ is 4. And now they want MK. So I'm going to write MO plus OK equals MK. This is the segment addition postulate. It's going to come back for the final exam. We have 3X minus 24. OK is 8. MO is 4. So we're going to get 12 equals 3X minus 24. Add 24 to both sides, and we're going to get 36. Divided by 3 is going to be 12. X equals 12. All right. Okay, next one. Um, this, we are going to do the mid-segment of a trapezoid. What it tells us is that we're directly in the middle because this side is equal to that side, and this side is equal to that side. We know that UT is in the middle. So we're going to do 2 times the middle equals the top plus the bottom. And this is what we worked on in class a lot. Um, but this is the mid, mid segment of a trapezoid. So what we're going to do is we're going to do 2 UT. We don't know. We're going to call X. GF we know is 17. And then HE is 35. So when I do 2X equals 40, 52. And then get rid of the 2. So we'll divide by 2. X equals 26. So then UT equals 26. If it was something else, then we could plug it back in. Oops, plug it in to whatever it was. So maybe this was X plus 5 or something instead of just 
unknown x. All right, so this one, do the same thing. And if you set it up, do the mid segment, two times y x equals r q plus s p. If you don't worry about the numbers and where they're located, just take two times the middle and then do the top plus the bottom. We can put an x wherever we don't know, but set this up so that we can do this properly. So two times y x, well y x is 50, r q is 44, s p we don't know. So that's what we're gonna set up. So 100 equals 44 plus x. So how did I get 100? Two times 50. <coughs> Excuse me, subtract 44 from both sides. I'm left with x. And that would be 60, 56. So x equals 56. And once again, this could be something else, and we just have to plug it into x to figure out that full length. All right. Opposite angles in kites. Only on the one and two sides. These are going to be equal. The top and the bottom are not because these lengths are different lengths and they start to form different angles because of that. So if this is 109, I do know that this is 109, but I have no idea what this is. So I'm gonna do X plus 109 plus 109 plus 84 equals 360. Now, if you wanna skip that step and do 109 plus 109 plus 84, 84 and get 302 I'm totally fine with that as well plus 302 equals 360 I just don't like skipping steps if I can help it and then this is 58 X equals 58 so angle C equals 58 angle D we knew was 109 because opposite angles between the 1 and the 2 and the 1 and the 2 those are going to be equal so what happens if we don't know either of those? Well, remember, this is the one side. Here's the two side. You can see that's longer, but I do know angle W and is equal to angle U. I know those two are equal to each other. So if that's the case, then make it X and make it X because they're gonna be the same angle. Plus, and we're gonna do 150 equals 360. So two X's, subtract 150 on both sides, and that's gonna leave me with 210 and two X. Divide by two, divide by two, and 105 is gonna equal X. So W is gonna be 105, U is gonna be 105, and we're good to go. So um, opposite angles are going to be equal to each other. So that takes us through the majority of the review. We did all these different problems, uh, in different styles of problems. Make sure you know what shape you're looking at and the information that those shapes will give us, okay? So really kind of try and pay attention to that. All right, I'm gonna stop recording.